Besties. Okay. Hi. Welcome back to the channel. If you don't know my face, my name is Stephanie Jean, and this is my channel where I like to talk about stuff on the internet. And today, we're discussing this lovely book called Bless Me Ultima by Rudolfo Anaya. I hope I am saying your name correctly, sir. I listened to this on Audible, and I also read it in the physical form, kind of went back and forth on it. The audiobook is really good, so no complaints there, but also... The written version, really good too. I don't know, man. Bless Me Ultima follows the story of a young boy who's about six years old. His name is Antonio or Tony. Um, and it starts when the local curandera or healing woman, medicine woman, um, she comes to live with his family. And she does because she lived alone in the Llano or the plains, the grasslands, the fields, whatever. She lived out there by herself and she was getting old. And so his mother is like, she can't be living out there by herself. We need to take care of her. So they do. And basically the story follows Antonio as he begins to question religion and faith and life and death. And is there God? Is there not a God? Is there multiple gods? So it deals a lot with that whole spiritual journey of this child and him growing up under the expectations of his parents. So his father is a Mares and that's his last name, Mares, um, which means ocean and his people and his culture is very restless and very much um, like cowboys out in the Llano, out on their horses under the sky, wild and free. And his mother is a Lunas, or a Luna. Is it Luna or Lunas? I don't remember, hold on. Lunas, the Lunas, which means moon. And I actually think, think, wow. I actually think that's like really beautiful that it's like the ocean and the moon because you know, the, the moon pulls the tides of the ocean. And I think that's really, really cute. Um, they don't really like elaborate on that metaphor that is there, but I, I it's there. I will say that it's there. But yeah, so his mother and the Lunas want him to be a farmer and a preacher, like the priest. They want him to be the priest of the Lunas to guide them and to be a learned man to like lead the people. And the Mares family, I guess, just wants him to be a Mares cowboy. I don't, I don't, I don't really know what they want. But he is the youngest son and the youngest child of this family. He has three older brothers and two older sisters, brother, 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 sister, sister, him. So he is the youngest. Because this is a Chicano piece of literature, it does have, you know, uh, if you're unfamiliar with Hispanic culture, um, I'm obviously not an expert, I'm not Hispanic, but I have had a lot of education in Hispanic culture just because of the area and when I, where I grew up. But there is a lot of pressure on young boys to carry out the dreams of their parents. And so the three older brothers don't really want to do that. They want to be their own people. So they're like, oh, you still have Tony. Like, give all the dreams to Tony. Tony will handle it. Tony's Tony's golden. He, let him be your golden boy. Like, let, it's fine. <laughs> Deborah and Teresa, his two older sisters, kind of don't do anything in the story, if that makes sense. They they just kind of like hang out with themselves and each other and play dolls. Yeah, I think they're like in third grade though. I think they're, li they're about that age. They're not that much older than him. They're still really young. So it takes place towards the end and after World War II, as well as the location, it takes place in the state of New Mexico. So that's basically all you need to know going into this book. My thoughts on it, let me talk about my thoughts. So I did discover that this is actually considered a banned book in a lot of places. And the reason why is because of violence, sex, and language. Language, totally understand. The F-bomb is dropped so much as well as uh, profanity in Spanish is dropped. So I think somebody said that if you were to take out all of the cuss words and put them by themselves, you'd have like 20 pages still of this book of bad words. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. For younger students in like high school, it might be a big deal. Maybe junior high probably wouldn't have kids read this. Uh, violence. There is a lot of violence in this, but no more than is in a Shakespeare play, honestly. There are six people who die in this book. And I mean, some of the deaths are 
like on screen and some of them are off. It's told from first person. So any of the deaths that Antonio sees, obviously, like you get the description of them. And then there are a lot of deaths that he doesn't see and that he just hears about. And so you get a different kind of description of those. I don't think it's so graphic and so, oh my God, there's violence in it. There is not gore in it. I mean, he talks about seeing, there is somebody who dies by a river and he talks about seeing, you know, the blood mix in with the water. And then later people are talking about a murder that happened and they're like, oh yeah, there was brains all over the place, but they're just kids talking on a schoolyard. So that's kind of an unreliable source of information. So take it as you will. As, so that is for violence and language. As far as sex and sexual content, there really isn't any. I think that the only sexual content in this book is related to the fact that there is a brothel of sorts on the edge of town, but he doesn't know that it's called that. He doesn't exactly know what it is. So he just kind of refers to it as, uh, I think it's Miss Rosie's house and the evil girls who live there. Because he's, yeah, that's what, it, that's how he refers to it. The prose in this book is very, 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 very poetic and beautiful. And I love the way it's written. However, the plot can seem kind of slow. So it could be kind of a drag to force yourself through it. I listened to most of it on audiobook, as I had said before, I went back and forth. And for those parts where the plot is going kind of slower, you could speed up the audiobook to get through it quicker because you're it's not as much of a drag, you know? Okay, let's talk about curanderas for a second. Because at first I did not know what a curandera was. I knew what a bruja was and they had this whole thing in this book about how Ultima, ooh, Ultima, right? how Ultima was a curandera and not a bruja. A bruja is a witch. A bruja, there are brujas in this book who lay curses on people, who do evil things, who sold their soul to the devil, who are terrible, terrible, terrible creatures. Um, humans who have given up to the dark side, basically. And a curandera uses the earth and nature to heal people, to cure people of a bruja's curse um, to give blessings and positive things. So Ultima is a curandera and I just kind of feel like maybe there's some gray area here. Like if you've read the book and you get through it, this is a little spoiler, and they go on the witch hunt for Ultima, uh, the father of the three brujas, and he says that she put a curse on his daughters. And, you know, I'm not saying that she didn't, because she kind of did, but also she just took a curse that they made and redirected it towards them. So, I mean, justice, karma, bruja, curandera, I kind of feel like it's the same thing. The only difference would be brujas sold their soul to the Christian devil and a curandera doesn't even recognize him. So I kind of feel like, I don't know, <laughs> because I'm very interested in, you know, paganism and how the different religions work with each other and stuff. And I, in English, I don't think there is a term that differentiates the modern witch and the modern bruja and curandera. So like in modern witchcraft, right? We have witches who are healers and they use the earth to heal people. And that just sounds like a curandera to me. However, and also I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. I think it's pronounced that way, but also I could be totally wrong because I'm white and I don't speak Spanish, sorry. I feel like there isn't a real distinction in modern culture, in modern English culture anyway, um, between a witch and a healer or a a natural healer. I don't know what exactly that's called, but some witches will say that's all just forms of witchcraft and you know, <laughs> I have no idea. He has all these questions and they're valid questions that a lot of people, 
of various faiths would ask like why does god allow this to happen why does god punish these people and not these people this was a good person why did a bad thing happen to him this is a bad person why is nothing bad happening to him those kinds of things and then being faced with a pagan god and being like well is he a god and is is my god that god and do they not like each other could do you have to pick one could you not have both I thought it was really interesting and I totally recommend y'all read it. I did give this book a three out of five stars even though it's really like a three and a half. I didn't give it a full five stars because it just took me so long to get through it because it was kind of a drag at certain places. Like the story is really interesting but it's not always instantly captivating. So like I don't know if I wasn't pushing myself through it I don't know if I would have gotten through this book. Um, so I definitely lost a star for that and then I lost a half star because all these questions came up and you don't really get any answers and I think that's kind of the point of it that sometimes books are supposed to leave you wondering so that's why it only lost a half star not a full star but 3.5 is where I'm at for this guy. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. As always, you can connect with me on social media at P underscore Stephanie Jean. And um, I will see you in the next June Tube video. Okay, love you. Bye.